Hi, Rochelle. Welcome to Movie Junk. How are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Excellent, excellent. We have Rochelle Cassius joining us today, fans of the Chucky TV series. I uh, know you as Detective uh, Kim Evans. You play Devin's mom. And you're also a, uh, a writer, director in your own right with over 40 credits to your name. It's an honor to have you on today. Oh, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. And I don't know if you realize this or not, but you're on one of the hottest uh, TV shows right now. You know, we're six episodes in and you guys are still holding uh, over a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's fantastic. Um, I knew, you know, the show was popular and given the franchise is so sort of iconic and legendary, um, it, it does make sense, but uh, that's great. Yeah, and uh, I know the uh, initial premiere had I me, mean, it was something crazy, like four and a half million views across uh, sci-fi and, uh, and USA. Uh, why do you think fans are so excited about Chucky? I mean, we're, this is like 35 years later almost from the first film. Yeah, it's interesting. There's something, um, I guess, that resonates with people about this, particularly the character of Chucky, I think. Um, there are probably many reasons for that, but... Um, yeah, I, I, I think that uh, it's, um, it's, you know, certainly something that I grew up with as a, a young person, um, you know, child's play, especially the first three were just, you know, um, the beginning of my sort of horror watching life. Um, and certainly Chucky was, was one of the big ones. So um, maybe there's a bit of nostalgia attached to it for, um, you know, the generations that are not teenagers now. Um, and then sort of reintroducing it to people, to the young people who are seeing it for, for the first time, discovering it for the first time. And I do got to ask, I know you mentioned the, uh, the first three films. Uh, what was your favorite out of the first uh, trilogy between one, two, and three? I think I saw number three first. I think I was about 11 when it came out. Um, and uh, yeah, it really stood out to me. Um, I think it was one of the first... Um, you know, it, first characters of color that, um, you know, the little boy um, who plays alongside Andy Barclay. Uh, so, so yeah, I guess there was something about that that I just sort of uh, attached to. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's, I know a lot of people like the first one and um, I think the curse and the bride are also popular ones, fan favorites, but that was mine. Yeah, no, definitely. We, we definitely agree. I mean, part three is my favorite. I mean, part two is amazing. Um, it's a kind of close race for me between two and three, but I'm kind of the same way. And I was probably four or five when uh, two and three came out because they came out a year apart. And I remember right. going to the, uh, to the video store and uh, renting both of them and watching them together. Um, but yeah, no, definitely. Same thing. Love the character of uh, Tyler. I hope maybe they can maybe sneak him into the, uh, the TV show. He's a little bit older now and I'm sure he's probably learned a lot of stuff kind of like how Andy's learned stuff from the uh from the marine so that'd be kind of cool that would be so cool yeah what did you like about the third one I just really like because um you know I I obviously love Alex Vincent I think he's amazing I would have loved to seen him be in the third movie but I did like seeing um you know kind of the roles reversed and more mature Andy kind of like what we're seeing now with the show but I liked how there's a new kid and kind of the stuff that he's learned, um, you know, kind of growing up and now kind of using that to take on Chucky. You know, Chucky's like, I got a new body and I haven't told anybody my secret. Um, it was just, and again, you're kind of seeing that in the show, just how seductive he is. It doesn't matter who it is, even if it was someone that wanted to kill him, he's just Draw so seductive. Yeah, totally. I think it's part, partly because he's so cute too. You know, like he's cute, like he's, terrifying but he's like this little red-headed doll like who looks like yeah. a toddler you know and so uh, I know Cult of Chucky came out in 2017 and then we got the remake uh, I think it was 2019 uh, when did you first hear about the uh, the tv show and what was the audition process like so we got audition like I got an audition not knowing what the project was at all um, it was titled under a, a pseudonym and I didn't realize until I got cast that I was in Chucky and I was like Chucky like the, the doll and they were like yeah like Chucky and I'm like oh my gosh like this is so anyway I had to go back and re-watch all of the, the movies just to kind of get um, a better feel for 
um, how I, you know, how I remembered them. And uh, it was pretty wild. I mean, you, you're amazing in the show. I mean, you play uh, Detective Evans. I mean, it's like you've been a detective your whole life. Was there any kind of prep that you had to do for this role? Or how did you sink into this role so good? Um, I watched a few detective shows, True Detective, Real Detectives. Um, and then I also spoke to a friend who's a cop, um, a female cop. And she kind of gave me a bit of a 411 on. She's been a cop for years. And she's around my age and she gave me um, the, you know, sort of how she experienced being a, a female in this profession that's largely male. Um, and some of the things, the daily things that she had to sort of encounter and that really helped me sort of sink my teeth into the role. Yeah. And uh, obviously we know, you know, Don Mancini, you know, has been a part attached to Chucky since the, uh, the original film, uh, you know, wrote the first three films. Uh, and also uh, Bride of Chucky, and then started, you know, now taking the uh, director role as well and the creator of the series. Did you have to audition? Uh, did he have to give the okay uh, for you to take on the role? Or kind of what was it like uh, working with Don? So I had um, done a role in a series called Channel Zero, and I didn't know that he was also um, behind that. And so I guess he had known some of my work, and then um, I didn't know, you know, he was behind... Chucky until I found out it was Chucky that I was cast in. So it was um, lovely and a pleasure to be working with him again. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you know, spoiler free, um, but obviously just from the commercials, you know, we see that a lot of the legacy characters are coming back from, you know, for episode five and episode six. Being a fan of the original trilogy, what do you think, um, you know, bringing the legacy characters back, you know, what, what do they bring to the, uh, to the show now? Oh my gosh. I mean, Jennifer Tilly, like it's Jennifer Tilly, right? Like yeah. she's so yeah. likable. She's so memorable. Um, she brings such an energy to the screen. Um, even just her voice is so recognizable. It's almost iconic in itself. So um, yeah, I think it's great. And then, you know, Andy's coming back, Alex Vincent, and then um, Kyle is coming back. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think they're going to bring, again, that little touch of nostalgia um, to sort of the older viewers and then um, and then just the joy of watching these amazing, um, yeah, amazing actors. Yeah, I mean, Jennifer Tilly, I mean, is just as, a, you know, a part of the franchise as Brad Dorif is. It's like, you know, I mean, you can't have one without the other now. It's like you want to see them fighting with each other, you know, as a couple. And it's just it's amazing how, you know, Jennifer Tilly came in, you know, and during Bride of Chucky and she just you know, stole the show. Um, I love seeing her uh, in these films. And I was yeah. excited um, that they brought her back in Curse and Cult and how her character's kind of grown in now to the series. We got a lot of her in this, uh, in this past episode. Um, and then yeah. same with Nika. How good is she? I didn't, I didn't initially know that that was her, um, um, you know, Brad Dorf's daughter, you know, playing her father with makeup. I thought, I was like, man, where did they find this actor? And I'm looking, yeah. that was insane. I know, almost like a spitting image, right? Yeah, identical, identical. Yeah, yeah. And um, so what are, what, are, um, what are your thoughts? I know where there were two episodes left. I mean, we're six episodes in. Um, you know, what are your thoughts, you know, for fans uh, to kind of what to expect in the coming episodes? Um. You know, it, it's sort of been a lot of surprises and unexpected twists and turns, especially with, have you, you're in the States, right? So you've gotten to what happens to me, my, my character. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we haven't officially seen, you know, I mean, I think we kind of got the hint, but uh, yeah, it's tough. I was, oh, you I was haven't tough. seen episode six yet? No, no, I've seen it, but typically the way I kind of rule it, if I don't see the person actually confirmed dead, I still say there's a hope, but I know we got the previews that there's a funeral in the okay. next episode, so we kind right, of know. right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of twists and turns, and it's just a wild, fun ride. Um, and I think that's the thing with the show is that um, you know don't get too caught up in wh what you're expecting the storyline to be, or or you know um, hoping for a, you know a certain lovable character to continue on because um, it's Chucky. And it's unexpected. And, yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, and not to spoil anything again, but I mean, there's such an intimate scene between you and Devin 
um, during this episode. It's just, it was like one of our first happy scenes that we get in a long time. And yeah. I mean, I, I already loved your character, but I loved your character even more. Um, so I was a little bummed. I wanted to, you know, again, no, no spoilers, you know, folks who haven't seen it, but um, I was a little bummed at the end. I was like, man, I was like, I, I, was, I wasn't expecting this. And that's the telling of a good show is, you know, keep everything unexpected. Both, both deaths, I wasn't expecting. I was like, I know. I yeah. I know. Right. When we pluck on like the heartstrings, like with Bree too, with the, the whole cancer thing and then the characters are gone. It's kind of, yeah, it's heartbreaking, but it's impactful. No, no, absolutely. It was extremely impactful. Yeah. And one of the things with Chucky, I mean, Chucky doesn't uh, discriminate. I mean, he kills folks of all ages. Um, I, I know I'm, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the Sopranos TV show and uh, David Chase, the creator, every time someone ends up getting to use the word whack, you know, he'll usually go to the person and kind of tell them, hey, you know, you're care because nobody wanted to be off the show because the show was so successful. How, does Don kind of have a practice or kind of a method to like, you know, when you're reading the script, do you, is that when you find out or does he tell you, hey, this episode, that's when you're going to get killed? <laughs> How does that work? Yeah. No, I mean, for me personally, um, it was kind of funny because he he was like, Rochelle, this is going to be so cool. This is going to be such a cool scene for you. Your neck is going to kick it. Can I spoil? Is that okay? It, it, it's already spoiled. <laughs> anyway, yeah. He, he, he was just so excited about my death. And the way he was explaining how it was going to happen was just like, you know, his eyes were just jubilant. And it was like, it was, it was funny because it was like, um, it wasn't like you're going to be whacked. It was like, this is going to be great. So um, I was just excited, as excited to, to work on that scene. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I was hoping that it, I was kind of under the impression that maybe you were because um, you were out, you were working late, you were, you were meeting with Miss Fairchild, you know, supposedly. I wasn't expecting you to come to the house. So when I saw you appear, I was like, there's the three main kids here. She's the adult. Someone's going to get killed. It more than likely isn't the kids. And I was like, man, that's it. When I saw you, I was like, oh, man, this is it. We're, she's going to go. Now, how she yeah. going to go? And when I saw you going down the stairs, I was like, maybe she's going to be hurt. She'll be OK. But then we see the head completely reversed. I was like, man, it's done. I know. I know. Yeah, that was uh, that was fun. But um, yeah, I, I, um, I really think that, uh, yeah, the special effects team really did a number on my neck with that. I had to do like two separate positions. Um, and then they, yeah, all of the sort of post made the effect what it is, what you see on screen. I mean, this is the best special effects that I've seen, you know, going back to probably Bride of Chucky. Chucky looks amazing. Um, you know, the kills look amazing with the blood and the gore. Um, I mean, is this just unbelievable? Because um, I, I know what we were hearing was that, you know, from, from a Chucky perspective, you know, since Ch Child's Play 2 was a really big favorite, that was the look that they were going for, uh, for, for this Chucky. And it looks amazing. It's crazy seeing yeah. that same look. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, again, it brings you back to, you know, the, the old ones. And it's, uh, it's, it's sort of a classic now. Classic and what's, look. And what's it like? I mean, just from, you know, seeing the credits, it looks like there's six puppeteers that handle uh, Chucky. You know, what's it like working with Chucky on set? There were different Chuckies. So um, the Chuckies that I worked with, one of them had flailing legs. Um, that were just like mechanical legs that were, I guess, battery powered or whatever. Um, there were some Chuckies that, you know, um, just were um, your standard doll. Um, yeah, so, and then I think they had some with like animatronics in the face. So yeah. it was really, really neat to see all of the, and the wonderful work that the puppeteers did as well. From what I read from, you know, as far as the films, you know, typically everything kind of gets filmed. And then I think that's when Brad Dorif typically does his voicing for the character. Is, is that how it works? Did, did you ever get a chance to meet Brad during the filming of this movie or? or no. no, I didn't. Yeah. So um, uh, typically it would be the one of the uh, assistant directors. Um, I think one time I had a puppeteer do some of the voicing. So, um, but no, unfortunately, I, I 
didn't get to meet him, even though I'm a huge fan um, from Chucky and, of course, from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Classic, classic. Really? Yeah. Um, so I, I also uh, read uh, as a rumor, I don't know if this is true, actually, I, I think um, Annie Briggs actually might have confirmed this in our last interview, but is, was this true that there was actually a, a kill wall during the set? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, it was in the, what was it? The makeup trailer. Yeah. And then, so I would go in there and they would be doing my makeup. And uh, yeah, every time I went in, there was a new face up there and, you know, ult ultimately my face got up there, so. And are there any words? Yeah, I know it's still early though, but are there any words for maybe a season two or maybe moving this over to a film? Is there any discussions yet or? There's some talk. I don't know too much about it, um, but I think there's a lot of hopes out there that there will be given its popularity. Um, it's, you know, likely that it might go in that direction. So we can just hope because I think this, this thing um, has a life now of its own. It's beyond, you know, it's beyond um, just, a, you know, a few small films. It is, it is its own thing. So um, hopefully it will continue. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it's, it's doing extremely well and, I mean, it's not just, you know, I'm, I'm I pay attention to, you know, other folks and social media. I'm always seeing posts. Everyone's excited each week. I'm excited when, it, when the weekend comes. I'm disappointed that it's Monday, that it's not Tuesday yet because I'm waiting for the show to come out. Um, so I'm extremely pumped. I'm, I'm sad that there's two more episodes left because uh, I kind of want this to, uh, to keep going uh, a bit longer. Hopefully, if there is a season two, they can make it 10 episodes, um, maybe have a little bit more budget. That would be great. Yeah. 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 It's, and it's the kind of show now that, you know, we're so used to streaming shows now and it's, yeah. you, you can't binge watch this one. You have to actually wait. So the anticipation is, is something that audiences are not used to. No, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And just shifting from Chucky, uh, I definitely want to learn a little bit more kind of how you got started uh, in the business. If I'm not mistaken, you also have a pretty extensive uh, theater background as well too, correct? Yeah, I graduated from Concordia University, which is in Montreal, in Canada, uh, from theater, and I got a bachelor's degree. And then I, yeah, I've been doing theater for 20 years. Um, it's sort of the, you know, the, the, first, the first thing that attracted me to acting was the theater. And then, then I moved into TV and film, um, as you do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then now here I am, I'm Chucky. It's amazing. It's insane how, how kind of everything comes full circle. And I know you mentioned the classic, you know, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Were there any films or maybe actors or actresses that inspired you to get into the business or have you always had the passion? Oh gosh, there's so many, so many. Um, I love, I love Robin Williams' work. Um, I love uh, all of these, you know, black actresses that are now, or have been starting to come to the forefront and playing very strong leading characters. Um, Viola Davis is a favorite of mine. Lupita de Nyong'o, of course, she wasn't around when I was growing up. Um, when I was growing up, it was like Holly Berry, who was also um, incredibly inspiring. Does but, she um, age? Yeah. Like very age? Does she? Does she ever age? Does I don't think she does. She's so <laughs> she, stunning. She doesn't. I know. Yeah, she's. I don't know. There's some kind of fountain of youth that they're all. Have you ever seen anything my, from my my favorite film of Halle Berry? I don't know if you ever seen it. It's uh, introducing Dorothy Dandridge. It may have been an HBO yeah. film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, was amazing. That was, that. She was. She's been amazing in in everything. Losing Isaiah, she was incredible yeah. in that. Um, so yeah, there have been a lot of people that I've been inspired by over the years, and um, and continue to be inspired by. And you also do um, some writing as well too, right? You've written some projects as well. Yeah, I mean, a more small, small time. Um, I was writing in a comedy troupe in Ottawa, which is where I lived, a small troupe. And we produced a few little things on, you know, on YouTube and stuff. Um, but I also wrote and co-directed, um, sorry, co-wrote and directed a short film called The Buckley Brothers. Um, 
and yeah, it's sort of dealt with race and racial identity, especially in a sort of more um, predominantly white um, society. So yeah, that was really interesting. It won a few awards. I'm very proud of that film. It was my, my first um, directorial debut. And yeah, I think you can see it on a few streaming services out there. Yeah, absolutely. And um, as far as, uh, you know, some of your upcoming projects, are you able to share some of your upcoming projects that we can expect to see? I'm, I'm, I'm bummed that you're, you're, you know, maybe, maybe we'll see you in a flashback that you're done in Chucky potentially, but is there anything else that we could see you in? Um, yeah, probably. Um, but um, I can't divulge, unfortunately. Um, so you'll, you will see me though. I'll be around. Awesome. Awesome. And, uh, one question that I love, uh, asking the, uh, the actors or the actresses, you know, when they're not working, you know, what are some of the shows that you guys binge watch? So like besides Chucky, you know, what are you binge watching nowadays? I, I, I feel kind of like it's a guilty pleasure, but I've really been into survivor lately. Mm -hmm. Um, Sure. Yeah, I don't know. Something about that show. It's just like a microcosm for so many things in in the world. And um, yeah, I just I just find it fascinating. Yeah, Survivor is great. I mean, it's one of those phenomenal yeah. shows. Did, they they recently revived it also, right? So there's some, if I'm not mistaken, didn't they revive Survivor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they um, now they're in their forty first season. I think so. It's such. It's another another one that has such this this legacy, this sort of history behind it, um, and it's still going. So there's something to that. Awesome, awesome, and uh, Rochelle, I want to be respectful of your time. You know, again, thank you for making the time to uh, to make it on a uh, movie junk. Really, really love uh, your performance. Again, really, really sad on how it ended, but again, you're in a Chucky series. No other way that it's going to end besides you know going out that way. Um, but you were amazing, awesome job, and can't wait to see. Once we are, once we're able to disclose some of those upcoming projects, you know, definitely let us know, and we'll share them with the fans, and we'll bring you back hopefully for uh, for round two. That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate. It. Thank you for joining again, and, and take care, and hopefully talk soon. You as well. See you. Take care. Cheers.